join my Patreon at patreon.com slash bunnytails for the full uncut reactions. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be watching more Star Trek The Original Series, something that I and hopefully you look forward to every week. Today we're going to be watching an episode called The Trouble with Tribbles and I can finally find out what is a Tribble and why are they so troublesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the comments. How close will we come to the nearest Klingon outpost if we continue on our present course? Close enough to smell them. Sherman's planet is claimed by both sides, our Federation and the Klingon Empire. The area was first mapped by the famous Russian astronomer Ivan Burkov. <laughs> yeah. I could tell he, there's something he really wanted to say about Russia right there. Under the terms of the Organian Peace Treaty, one side or the other must prove it can develop the planet most efficiently. Organian Peace Treaty. There it is. Kirk here. Captain, I'm picking up a subspace distress call. It's called one emergency. That's a disaster call. This is a red alert. Man your battle station. All hands. Let's go. Another unknown adventure from myself. You guys all know, but I don't. Priority one call. We can only assume the Klingons have attacked the station. We're going in armed for battle. Armed for battle. What is your emergency? I must apologize for the distress call. Mr. Lurie, you issued a priority one distress call. State the nature of your emergency. I'll try to explain. You'd better be prepared to do more than that. Kirk out. Well, they're going to beam into an emergency situation without any information on the nature of the emergency? Do they need, like, protective gear? Do they need weapons? Why did you issue a priority one distress call? That was my order, Captain. He's out from Earth to take charge of the development project for Sherman's planet. Mr. Barris is the Federation Undersecretary in charge of agricultural affairs in this quadrant. I want all available security guards. I want them posted around the storage compartments. Storage compartments? Storage compartments? The storage compartments containing the, the quadro triticale. Is what? very what? frustrated right now. What's like, can you just tell me what oui. the hell so what? is going on? Of course, I wouldn't expect you or uh, Mr. Spock to know about it. Quadro triticale is a rather... Quadro triticale is a high-yield grain, four-lobed hybrid of wheat and rye, a perennial also, if I'm not mistaken. Its root grain, triticale, can trace its ancestry all the way back to 20th century Canada. Uh, Mr. Where... Spock, you've made your point. Keep, have, keep going. <laughs> and it's very important that that grain get to Sherman's planet safely. Never challenge a Vulcan's knowledge. At least not You spots. issued a priority one distress call for a couple of tons of wheat. Quadro triticale. Misuse of the priority one channel is a Federation offense. I did not misuse the priority one channel. Well, you still haven't explained. Couldn't you at least post a couple of guards? It would seem a logical precaution, Captain. Beam down two and only two security guards have the report to Mr. Lurie. Captain Kirk, how dare you authorize a mere two men? Starfleet command. I have never this. questioned the orders or the intelligence of any representative of the Federation. Until now. Until now. <laughs> I, uh, it frustrates me just as much as it frustrates Kirk when they, whoa, butterfly wings. When, like, there's clearly something that needs to be expressed and explained, but they just don't, they just dance around the issue and they don't say what they mean or what needs to be said. You see, you didn't waste any time taking your shore leave. She wants to shop and I thought I would help her. Mr. Chekhov, what do you make of this? Oh, Quattro Triticale. Does everybody know about this wheat but me? Well, not everyone, Captain. It's a Russian invention. Okay, yeah, uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Surely you want... Not at your price. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's adorable. It's a triple. Only the sweetest creature known to man. <laughs> oh, it's furry. My friend, ten credits apiece is a very reasonable price. He won't bite, will he? Tribbles have no teeth. <laughs> the teethless tribbles. Four credits. Is that an offer or a joke? <laughs> All right, you robber, six credits. John, when can I have them? Right away. What are you selling them for? Uh, ten credits. Thief. In fact, I'll sell you this one. Uh-oh. It's eating the... And I please to give it to the lovely little lady here. Once this lovely little lady starts to show this precious little darling around, you won't be able to keep up with them. Hmm. When I posted my video reaction for Gremlins, people were 
bringing up tribbles and i i'm seeing the i'm feeling the same like vibes right here like what does it eat how do you take care of it just because it's cute doesn't mean you should have it as a pet captain it is not necessary to remind you of the importance to the federation of sherman's planet the safety of the grain and the project is your responsibility oh well, that's just lovely sensors are picking up a klingon battle cruiser rapidly closing on the station uh oh the klingons it's always exciting when they make an appearance in the episode their ships and just the makeup and everything just always very interesting to see at the very least i don't think the klingons are planning to attack us why not because at this moment the captain of the klingon ship is sitting right here in my office and what is the meaning of this ah oh, my dear captain kirk the purpose of my presence here is to invoke shore leave rights shore leave we klingons are not as luxury minded as you earthers is that Trelane? And what we choose as recreation is our own business. And is that the al alternative factor guy? Lazarus? I don't want them here, but I don't have the authority to refuse. You may indeed bring your men down on shore leave, with only 12 at a time. There's been no formal declaration of hostilities between our two respective governments. Our relationship will be a peaceful one. Let us both take steps to keep it that way. Hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Trelane. Another technical journal, Scotty? Aye. Don't you ever relax? I am relaxing. <laughs> oh, everybody's got one. This morning I found out that he, <laughs> I mean, she had had baby. The most curious creature, Captain. Trilling seems to have a tranquilizing effect on the human nervous system. But of course, I am immune to its effect. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Lieutenant, do you mind if I take one of these down to the lab and see what makes it tick? Well, all right, Doctor. Say, Lieutenant, as soon as you're giving them away, can I have one? Oh, sure, why not? I, I think they're old enough. Yeah. Go ahead. They've been alive for like half an hour at least. <laughs> Kirk, this station is swarming with Klingons. I was not aware, Mr. Barris, that 12 Klingons constitutes a swarm. Now, I want you to keep that grain safe. I have guards around the Klingons. The only reason those guards are there is because Starfleet wants them there. As for what you want, it has been noted and logged, Kirk. Out. May I ask where you'll be? Sick bay with a headache. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Uh oh. Bones. Did his one multiply too? How many of these did Uhura give you? Just one. Uh, how do they? Uh... I uh, I haven't figured that out yet. Almost 50% of the creature's metabolism is geared for reproduction. Well, Bones, all I can suggest is you open up a maternity ward. You don't see how this could be an exponentially, increasingly bad situation? I want you to go on shore leave. Make sure that everybody stays out of trouble. But, Captain... Scotty, enjoy yourself. I feel like I am Scotty right now. Bunny, go take a break. Take a day off. No, I can't. I refuse. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go again. The sky is back. And so are the really cute butterfly outfits. A charming little tribble. Um, no thanks. Yeah. Ah, friend Klingon. Get it away from me. I'm sorry, I... Never seen him act this way before. Take it away. Yes. They don't like Klingons? Tribbles are racist? Spacist? This time, a Tribble for a spot. A Tribble. <laughs> His gestures are amazing. <laughs> When are you gonna get off that milk diet, lad? This is vodka. Well, this is a drink for a man. Scotch was invented by a little old lady from Leningrad. <laughs> Frankly, I never liked Earthers. They remind me of regular blood work. That's bait. You wanna be more forgiving? No. Oh. <laughs> Kirk may be a swaggering, overbearing. Tin-plated dictator with delusions of godhood. 
Bertie. Easy, lad. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. And if I think that Kirk is a Denebian slime devil. Don't do it, mister, and that's an order. It's not worth fighting for. I see where Chekhov is coming from there, though. We like the Enterprise. That's sagging. Oh, rust buckets. is designed like a garbage Oh, skull. no. Laddie, don't you think you should rephrase that? You're right. I meant to say that it should be hauled away as garbage. Oh no, punch him. Yeah! <laughs> Do not talk about Scotty's baby like that. Well, this is an interesting shore leave. Now, what is this guy doing? Oh, little check <laughs> He's so small. Now, Klingons, are they physically stronger than humans in, in general? Or about the same? Looks pretty evenly matched. <laughs> He's just getting a bunch of free drinks. <laughs> He's like, and it's time for me to make my exit. Talk about me, no problem. Talk about my captain, now we got a problem. Talk about my enterprise, now we got a problem. I wanna know who started it. Who started the fight? I don't know, sir. Chekhov. You started it, didn't you? No, sir, I didn't. Well, who did? I don't know, sir. I don't know, sir. <laughs> I wanna know who threw the first punch. He skipped right past Scotty. Scotty, not you. Who threw the first punch, Scotty? I did, Captain. You did, Mr. Scott? <laughs> they insulted us, sir. You threw the first punch. Chekhov wanted to, but I held him back. You held... Why did Chekhov want to start a fight? The Klingons called you a tin-plated, overbearing, swaggering dictator. I see. And then they said that you were... I get the picture, Scott. And I didn't see that it was worth fighting about. <laughs> Sorry, you're not worth fighting about, but something else is. <laughs> what was it they said that started the fight? They called the Enterprise a garbage skull. Sir. <laughs> That's when you hit the Klingon. Yes, sir. He's like, obviously. This was a matter of pride. All right, Scotty. Dismissed. <laughs> You're restricted to quarters until further notice. Thank you, sir. That'll give me a chance to catch up on my technical journals. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Never force him on shore leave again. <laughs> There's something disquieting about these creatures. Oh? It is a human characteristic to love little animals. I am well aware of human characteristics. I am frequently inundated by them, but I have trained myself to put up with practically anything. This is where he draws the line. I like them <laughs> better than I like you. <gasps> Doctor, they do indeed have one redeeming characteristic. They do not talk too much. <laughs> You'll excuse me, sir. <laughs> this episode is brutal. The snark, the snide remarks, the... <laughs> it's very entertaining. It's only human nature to, to love cute furry little animals. Pinch them on their little furry cheeks and say, Uchi Dr. McCoy, would you mind coming up to the bridge? Okay, this is getting a little bit out of control. Poor Spock, he's got him all over his station too. Dr. McCoy. Yes. Well, don't look at me, it's the Tribbles who are breeding. And if we don't get them off the ship, we're gonna be hip deep in them. I've been running computations on their rate of reproduction. The figures are taking an alarming direction. Mm-hmm. They give us love. 
Too much of anything, Lieutenant. Even love isn't necessarily a good thing. Yes, Captain. Contact Mr. Lurie and tell him I'm beaming down. And get these tribbles off the bridge. <laughs> Surely you must have realized what would happen if you removed the Tribbles from their predator-filled environment. Oh, normally they have predators keep their numbers down. But breeding animals is not against regulations. Only breeding dangerous ones. And Tribbles are not dangerous. Well, I must be tending my ship a while. But... <laughs> I consider your security measures a disgrace. I think of this project as very important. It is you I take lightly. You have given free and complete access to this station to a man who is quite probably a Klingon agent. Cyrano Jones, a Klingon agent. My assistant here has kept Mr. Jones under close surveillance for quite some time. Well, Captain, I checked his ship's log, and it seems that he was within the Klingon sphere of influence less than four months ago. We have already checked on the background of Mr. Cyrano Jones. He's never broken the law, at least not severely. You can't deny he's disrupted this station. People have disrupted stations before without being Klingon agents. I have a ship to tend to. Au revoir. Oof. They're everywhere. They're in the food. This is my chicken sandwich and coffee. Well, it was. I don't care if it takes every man we've got, I want them off the ship. They're into the machinery, all right. Oh, no. Don't take Manager Lurie and Nils Barris. Have them meet us near the storage compartments. We're beaming down. I'm trying to figure out the motive for this guy. If, I mean, I don't know if he's um, a Klingon agent, but what would the Klingons, why would they want to disrupt this deal? I feel like I missed something. What's wrong? Plenty of what I think happened has happened. Is that door secure? Yes, sir. Nothing could get in. Good. Uh, open it. It's not working, sir. It seems to be stuck. Yeah. Why is he carrying that thing around? <laughs> oh! Oh! How many of these did they make? Man, the prop team was busy. They seem to be gorged. Gorged? On my grain? Must be thousands of them. One million seven hundred seventy-one thousand five hundred sixty-one. Wow. You are responsible for turning the development project into a total disaster. You have abused your authority and you have rejected my request. Uh -huh. I am going to hold you responsible, Mr. Barris. I'll hold you in irons if you don't shut up. All we have to do is quit feeding them. We quit feeding them. They stop breeding. Now he tells me. Yep. <laughs> this triple is dead. <gasps> and so are these. Logical assumption is that there is something in the grain. Yeah, bones. I want the tribbles, the grain, everything analyzed. I haven't figured out what keeps them alive yet. <laughs> they just keep coming. There's. I want that job. Sit up in the hatch and every once in a while just throw a stuffed animal at, at Shatner. Just. <laughs> and as captain, I want two things done. First, find Cyrano Jones, and second. Close that door. <laughs> really, Captain Kirk, I must protest this treatment. Oh, uh, Mr. Jones, with an armful. You know exactly what you're doing, sir. Uh, what do you want? Mr. An official apology addressed to the Klingon High Command. You've harassed my men. You've treated them like criminals. You've been most uncourteous, Captain Kirk. What? As far as Sherman's planet is concerned, Captain Kirk has already given it to us. Who put the tribbles in the quadro triticale? What was in the grain that killed them? Before you go on, may I make a request? Those things out of here. Remarkable. Hold on a minute. The last time I saw one act this way was, was at the bar. What was in the bar? Klingons. Hmm. So that guy is a Klingon? Well, you're right, Mr. Jones. They don't like Klingons. But they do like Vulcans. Obviously, Tribbles are very perceptive creatures, Captain. Obviously. <laughs> it's only logical. Mr. Barris, they like you. Well, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> they don't like you, Mr. Darwin. I wonder why. 
He's oh. a Klingon. Jim, this man is a Klingon. Klingon? What about the grain, Bone? It was poisoned. It was poisoned? I have nothing to say. All right, I poisoned the grain. Take them away. So the Klingons poison the grain? And I hope I never see one of those fuzzy, miserable things again. I'm certain that can be arranged, Darwin. Guard? Well, it's a good thing that grain didn't get to where it was going. Captain Kola, you have six hours to get your ship out of Federation territory. <laughs> hey, you know, I think I can learn to like dribbles. So that guy... Oh, this poor man. He saved the day with his tribbles. You know what the penalty is for transporting an animal proven harmful to human life? One little tribble isn't harmful. You can't have just one little tribble. After all, uh, my tribbles did put you wise to the poison grain, and they did help you to find the Klingon agent. You saved a lot of lives that way. <laughs> there is one thing you can do. Yes. Pick up every triple on the space station. <laughs> and now you see exactly <laughs> why they're harmful. 17.9 to be exact. Captain, you're a hard man. All right, all right! You'll do it. You'll do it. I'll do 17 it. years? He's going to need several ships to carry all those, I think. <laughs> I don't see any triples around here. Hopefully they got them all. Bones! How did you do that? Well, I cannot take credit for another man's work. Scotty did it. Oh, uh, Captain, it was really Mr. Spock's recommendation. Of course. Did they just shoot them all out into space? Well, it was Mr. Scott who performed the actual engineering. Where are the triples? I used the transporter, Captain. Oh? Scott, you didn't transport them into space, did you? That'd be inhuman. Well, where are they? I gave them to the Klingons, sir. You gave them to the Klingons? <laughs> I transported the whole kit and caboodle into the air engine room, where there'll be no trouble at all. <laughs> what an episode. Okay, well, the trouble with Tribbles. This is definitely a standout episode. It's very memorable. It's very unique in the matter that they're dealing with. There's a bunch of furry little purring creatures that keep multiplying um, exponentially. And it seems like they were in the right place at the right time with regards to this poisoned trito trill Kaylee, whatever. <laughs> the space wheat. So the Klingons were trying to sabotage this operation with getting this grain, the only earth grain that can grow on the planet. I don't really understand why the grain needed to be on the planet. Um, who's on the planet or what's on the planet? Is there a famine going on? Maybe I just missed some details. And why would the Klingons want to sabotage this? And yes, the Tribbles definitely do remind me of the Gremlins, except maybe a little less mean and dangerous, but still dangerous in their own way because of the fact that they multiply like that so easily, so exponentially. They're definitely a pest. Um, they can ruin a whole ecosystem if left unchecked take over a ship, cause it to not function anymore if enough of them got in the engines and messed with all the stuff in there. And I just really loved this snarkiness from everybody in this episode. There were a lot of sarcastic remarks, a lot of sideways comments. Uh, don't really know the correct words to say it, but um, <laughs> the way Kirk was treating that the one guy uh, from the Federation, I guess. Although, he might have been a bit too harsh and unprofessional, but it was super entertaining just to hear him talk to that guy. And... <laughs> Chekhov and Scotty were great. 
The fact that Chekhov, you know, would fight to defend his captain and Scotty holding him back, but then they crossed the line when they started talking about his baby, his ship, his Enterprise, and Kirk making that realization that <laughs> I loved seeing that softer, um, nurturing side or the side that appreciates things that are, are cute and cuddly when it comes to bones. Kind of reminds me of the episode Friday's Child where He's, you know, having fun with the cute little baby and doing his uchi wuchi gucci goo or whatever. Um, I thought the characters were very well written in this. Everybody felt like... It feels like the writer really understood all of the characters and also kind of exaggerated some of their traits as well. And it just made for a really fun time. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been an immensely fun time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know your comments, what you thought about this episode. As always, please try to keep spoilers about future episodes and series to a minimum so that we don't ruin any surprises for me and for everybody watching who wants to see me be surprised about things. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you again and goodbye.